Hey, young people. That's a pretty good little case right here in little old Dallas, Texas. Jeez, liberal paradise. Run by liberals for liberals, always out of money, but has 600000 to remove a, a Confederate statute because that's important to liberals, not the out-of-control murder and crime rate. This police officer has been arrested for two counts of capital murder. Capital murder means he planned it. He was the guy. There's three people in prison who supposedly said he's the one that wanted this person dead. They don't know the motive yet. Interesting little case. So I figured I'd, I'd go over it a little bit just kind of on, you know, they're not releasing a lot, so I can't really make any determination. But according to this, the lawyer said his client's innocent. Shocking. Who could have predicted that shit? Ray Charles saw that coming. Uh, murder for hire scheme of his client. His client is the cop. In the 2017 killings, does not know one of the victims. So that means he must be innocent. And the other victim lived with the officer's father. Now, this officer on the Dallas Police Department, who's just been arrested, has already pled guilty to transporting and uh, possession of crank or methamphetamine with the intent to distribute or some shit. I think they might cover the charge here in a minute. Uh, so, with the investigator last week, they arrest, uh, and they charge him with two cases of capital murder. Now, they knew this cop was a suspect back in 2017, and for two years, they let this cop walk the streets with a gun. Even though he was a suspect in two murders, he worked as a cop, because diversity is our strength, we can't correct anybody for anything without being called a name so we must be diverse two years he's a suspect in a double homicide and he's walking around with a badge and gun serving the great people that elect this shit in, in te Dallas Texas freaking crazy uh, in the first comment riser shook the point several red flags against the officer who continued to patrol for more than a year and a half after he was implicated in the killings of this man and woman so after he's implicated a year and a half, he stays on the job, getting paid, earning retirement, protecting and serving the shit out of you pesky citizens. He's driving around patrolling. Uh, if you really thought he was involved, why wouldn't you move on him? I would agree. Um, who remained in jail. So now they have the cop in jail on $5 million bond. So in two years, something changed pretty big because in two years, he went from being able to carry a gun and ride around on the street when he was a suspect to now he's in jail on five million bond. What changed? Well, they're not releasing a whole bunch. He was released Thursday after offering to pay three men to kidnap and kill 31-year-old and 61-year-old. Douglas was reported missing. The body hadn't been found. The other body was pulled from a Dallas River in March with bullet wounds. Now, murder for hire in this case is a tough case to prove because if this officer hired three of his criminal buddies who were probably buddies with his dad, who was a criminal, I think his dad's in, in prison for five years for his guilty plea. So he obviously has good connections with the criminal element. But Rick, he's a police officer and he's a hero and we should trust him and we don't need guns and they do backgrounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because you're an idiot. So he, he somehow got these three guys, which is very easy as a cop, especially... As a cop, if I arrest you for a felony, I say, dude, man, I can book you or you're going to owe me. All right, man, I'll owe you. And then later I come back and go, dude, I need to take care of some shit. I need you to plant some dope. I need you to do this. So it's very easy for someone in power to do that. Obviously, you should find people that would do something like that in the background. Like, you know, if their father was a known drug dealer, uh, if they hung out with uh, criminals, maybe if a supervisor was watching how you do your job. But again, we can't say anything because diversity is our strength and we can't say anything that might affect that. Even if it's wrong, bad, illegal, or costing people their lives, the priority is diversity is our strength, the liberal way. Authorities said that one of the men's uh, killing implicated riser questioned why he continued on patrol for more than 20 months. I agree. And of course, the mayor, this is where they always come out. Oh, I had no knowledge. I'm so offended. We're going to get to the bottom of it. Dallas Mayor Eric Johnson, another left-wing idiot, Monday 
formed a city council committee. Oh, that's going to be some more money. Probably got a different budget. We'll raise some taxes. And we'll have a new committee to find out why we're so stupid. Uh, to investigate that questions on how this case was handled. The seven-member committee is empowered to subpoena witnesses and compel city employees to turn over records. Ooh, man, that's very special. Man, this council, this, man, this mayor's on the job. He doesn't know shit that's going on in his apartment. He's got an officer out there that when the chief works for him, the police department works for him, that's running around carrying a badge and a gun for two freaking years. But now he's Johnny on the spot. I'm going to have me a committee. Woo! Mayor Johnson. Johnny on the spot. Who is, uh, is Ray Charles and uh, Stevie Wonder on a committee? Because I'm sure they're going to get to the bottom of it. This was an awful situation. The public deserves answers. Yeah, they do. They probably deserve a new damn mayor, too. Regarding who and what they knew and when they knew it and why the officer remained on active duty. Well, has the mayor, shouldn't you have been briefed? I, I did, Maybe you should have found this out. Maybe the people elected you to keep an eye on our crooked-ass police department that you fill with ignorance in order to be politically correct and you over-budget and you don't have enough money, and you spend on stupid programs, and then you have 600000 to remove a Confederate statue because that's important. But this, by gosh, we're going to have a committee on this. Police have not explained the connection to the victims and said the motive is unknown. Well, I mean, motive is important, but they're going to figure out motive. They just may not want to release it yet. I mean, if they got the guy held on $5 million bill and they just arrested him, that doesn't mean the case is over. Sometimes we will allow somebody out so we can gather more evidence, we can tap their phones, we can follow them, we can see who they're communicating with. All this is a fact-finding mission or an evidence-gathering mission, so we don't want to lock the guy up because we'll lose that. But then once we get enough information that we think we can make a case, we'll arrest the guy, but that doesn't stop the investigation. Now we got to go back and follow up, see if we get witnesses, see if we can turn witnesses, see if we can find more evidence or get somebody to corroborate where he was, when he was, check his cell logs, check his map things, see what he's searching on a computer. We can still be investigating why he's in jail. The jail just starts the, the clock for the speedy trial, which in most murder trials, they always waive time because they don't want a speedy trial because it takes too long for their defense attorney to get up on a case. And if the defense attorney doesn't waive a speedy trial, then he can't bill him as much money and the case goes to trial quicker and then the court doesn't get all the money and the defense doesn't get all the money and then everybody can't make money off this guy sitting in prison. So they always get you to waive time. Uh, let's see. The elder riser, that would be the guy in jail, pleaded guilty 2018 in possession with intent to distribute controlled substance with a sentence of five years in prison. If he got five years in prison... Who thinks this is the first arrest for the elder riser? Raise your hand. If your hand's up, you're an idiot. Because of course he had an extended criminal history. He's done time before. Nobody goes to prison for their first offense. This guy's a career criminal. They're not releasing that. But you know what? If he raised his son to be a police officer, he can't be that bad, right? Because all police are heroes. Okay, he currently at a residence of re-entry center in Texas on community supervision. Uh... Now, this is where it gets kind of muddy for me. Uh, Miss Sinez, or Mr., whatever it is, I don't want to mess up pronoun, was an informant according to the affidavit for Riser's arrest. So what that means is when they arrested the cop, they used her as an informant, a confidential informant, and whatever she said, they used against him. My guess is she or he said that Riser conspired, met with him, paid him. He's the one that wanted him dead. They were just carrying out. He had dirt on him, etc. Now, I think this person is already in jail on another crime. I don't like when cases are dependent on people in jail because the DAs will take any deal when somebody's already in jail and they got you in prison, they've already got their conviction and their stats, so they already have what they want to use for their next political position. Now, if they can get you to turn on someone else, they get a new stat, and who cares if they cut you a deal or cut your time in half? Who cares if you're lying? just to get this guy arrested. The DA gets his big arrest. So uh, I'm not a big fan of using, if their whole case depends on the guy in jail, uh, I'm gonna have to call a little bit of bullshit. The document does not elaborate on what that means. Dallas Police Chief Eddie Garcia. Man, they, Dallas goes through police chiefs like uh, shit. Chins in a Chinese phone book. I mean, every time you turn around, they're firing and hiring a new police chief. But they always keep 
the priority for hiring, as diversity is our strength. Okay, Thursday, the killings were related to Rising's police work. Three men were previously charged with capital murder in the killings of, I guess, three, three people. Uh, Kirkpatrick serving a life sentence for killing a father and son. Kidd and Simmons are jailed on capital murder charges stemming from killings of Sinez and the father and the son. Simmons is also charged with another death. This is what you call a shitty case. And this is where the, the prosecutor is going to get up in front of the jury and go, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this is not a clean, easy case like you see on TV. Sometimes we have to make deals with the devil. Our business is dirty. And sometimes our witnesses are dirty because we deal with the criminal element and nobody's really clean. So you're going to hear testimony from people who have been convicted and who may be in prison. And the defense attorney is going to try to tell you they're not credible because they are in prison. However, we're going to prove to you that they are credible and we're going to prove to you that their, their testimony is helping us prove our case, whatever. And they always give the same spill about you got to make a deal with the devil and this is a dirty business and sometimes it's hard to find clean witnesses. So same spill, the jurors always fall for it and go, okay, I get it, I'll just vote guilty because the government would never lie and we'll just convict because the government says so. The man was implicated by who did not name a name, told investigators he was involved in burglaries with the officer. So now we have some person saying not only is the officer hiring people to kill him, but he's also breaking into buildings and stealing shit. Uh, oh, when they were both young. Okay, well, I get that. So what? The officer was committed burglary when he was young. It, now, if he didn't put that in his background, and if they didn't know that when they hired him, then it may be relevant. But if they already knew that, that's not really relevant to this case. Uh, Shook and Riser knew Kirkpatrick in high school where they worked together at a skating rink. And then they reconnected in 2017 at a donut shop. Who could have predicted that shit? A cop running into his buddies at a donut shop. He certainly wasn't involved in committing crimes. Of course not. His lawyer says so. It must be true. Uh, all right. So let's look at a video here on this video. Because in this video, the FBI is disputing what the Dallas police chief said. And the Dallas police chief at the time was a black female. Diversity is our strength. She was hired. And I think she lasted a year and a half, two years. Uh, so she said the FBI recommended that they leave him on the streets or remove him or something. It'll it'll come out in a video. But uh the FBI says, no, that's not true. Don't put the blame on us. We don't recommend what you police you crooked police departments do. So the FBI is saying the police department's to blame. Don't blame us. The police department is saying the FBI is to blame. For these murders were unknown at this time. A day after Dallas police arrested one of their own on capital murder charges, the FBI's special agent in charge you guys ready? disputed a statement made by former police chief Renee Hall. In a statement issued last night, Hall said the DPD Special Investigations Unit, in collaboration with the FBI, recommended not placing Officer Brian Reiser on administrative... Okay, so this is key because everybody's asking, why would a guy implicated in two murders still be allowed to carry a gun and work the street? Well, of course, the police chief said the FBI recommended it. That's why we didn't do it. And now the FBI is like, no, 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 no. We didn't recommend. Don't put your dirty shit on us because you didn't relieve my duty. So again, like in all government uh, great bureaucracies that is so efficient that we should trust uh, and we should give up our guns because only these competent idiots should have guns and we shouldn't. Uh, this is what happens. Leave. We did not at any time and would not uh, make recommendations about um, pulling him off or taking him or, or leaving him on duty. With Dude, why is it that nobody can fix their freaking tie before they get on the camera? How hard is it to look in the mirror and make sure your tie is centered? I know this is anal. I know some people are going to be like, who cares? I, You know what? If you can't fix your freaking tie before you get in front of a camera, come on, dude. Jeez. Oh, I forgot. Never mind. He's the FBI. Those guys are good. We at no time asked them to leave him on duty. Hall also said in her statement that after the allegations came to light. It ain't my fault. It's the FBI's fault. It ain't never my fault. It's my. Oh, you're just saying it's my fault because I'm a woman. Oh, you're saying it because I'm black. You're saying it because I'm a black woman. That's why you're saying it's my fault. It's the FBI's fault. Okay, no problem. Nobody asks any more questions. Nobody wants to be called a name here. Light in 2019, it was determined there was not enough evidence to charge him at that time. We were. 
So there's not enough evidence, so you leave them on the job? I mean, you don't need evidence. You don't need a criminal offense to get a cop off the road. If you think he's engaged in unlawful or unethical behavior, you do an investigation, prove the unethical behavior, and you can either relieve him of duty during the investigation, or you can terminate his ass. The fact that they're saying, oh, well, the investigation didn't prove enough to arrest, so we left him on the job. Holy shit. All you people who go to trial and are not guilty, go apply for Dallas Police Department, because that's not a disqualifier just because you have a rap sheet 20 pages long with 14 tried convictions, but you beat them all. Go, go apply for the Dallas Police Department. You pass their background check. We're investigating the case. We continue to investigate the case with the Dallas Police Department. Riser thought he was coming to Dallas Police Headquarters for a routine disciplinary hearing Thursday morning. But in reality, police sources say it was a ruse to get him into custody. Okay, so normally when you got a cop walking, it's kind of risky on how you arrest him. If you get him to come to a place to where he can't carry a gun or because it was probably a disciplinary hearing, they probably tell him, we don't want you armed for the disciplinary hearing. So he thinks he's going in for some poo butt, you know, somebody made a complaint on me, so he doesn't bring his gun, and now they can arrest him with less likelihood of him pulling a gun. Rick, why would he pull a gun? He's a police officer, he's had background, and he's a hero, and he's here to protect. Well, that's because you're an idiot. Police say Riser, seen here in newly released booking video, ordered two killings in 2017. The investigation into Riser got underway in 2019. Police records show a witness already in jail facing capital murder charges came forward saying Riser hired him to do the... I wish they would show these so we could read the report or put a link. Killings. The witness said Riser described Lisa Science, one of the victims, as an informant. You've got a mastermind criminal who's organized... Let me see if I can go back to that. Let's see. FBI research... Complainant Douglas showed that there was no longer proof of life regarding complainant Montiago. Cons constant contact with the family have not been heard of. Suspect Rohetti stated for about two weeks after complainant Douglas' murder, something during February witnessing gave him another job to have another individual kidnapped and killed. Oh, so it looks like not only one of the people not only one person is an informant, there's a couple of informants. Um, so he wanted somebody kidnapped and killed. The suspect provided a location where Sinas could be located. The same method of operation was used to locate the suspect and was told to witness she was an informant. Both complainants were taken from the same area, killed and dumped in the Trinity River. The suspect agreed to pay the witness 6000 after they agreed the witness and associates were arrested for capital murder. Hmm. Detective Montigago received preliminary cell site location analysis performed by, and the suspect's cell phone placed him in or about the area during the time. Okay. So, look, they wouldn't arrest a dude and put $5 million bail without a pretty good case. So, obviously, they have other stuff besides this convicted felon's commentary. The victims as an informant. You've got a mastermind criminal who's organized, uh, based on affidavits at least, uh, he's organized two professional hits, and he's a uniform patrol officer. Be nice if this news agency put who the hell's talking. Who is this guy? I don't know who this is. Armed, uh, walking and patrolling the streets of our city. That's difficult to believe. Police sources tell WFA Dallas police are investigating what connections this situation may have to Riser's father. Federal court records show he operated a drug house here in this Dallas. A drug house. Ooh. This apartment. He was arrested in August 2017 for intent to distribute narcotics. He was sentenced and is housed in this Grand Prairie federal prison. Officer Riser is now on administrative leave. He is being held in the Dallas County Jail on $5 million bail. Administrative leave, I think, means he's still getting paid. I don't know. Hang on, there's another video. Hello, I'm Blake Hansen. Hi, everybody. I'm Heather Hayes. Police say Officer Brian Reiser ordered the murders of a man and woman in 2017. He was also arrested that same year for a misdemeanor assault family violence charge, apparently unrelated to those killings. Fox 4's Natalie Solis live at the Dallas oh, Police so Department. Oh, so he was arrested. Story. Natalie. So he was arrested for a misdemeanor assault for family violence, meaning he was beating his wife. If you get arrested for domestic violence, I didn't think you could carry a gun. 
So not only is this guy arrested for domestic violence, he's a suspect in a double homicide. And Dallas Police Department think that's okay that he should keep working. And the mayor claims he didn't know anything about it. Shocking. Assault family violence charge apparently unrelated to those killings. Fox 4's Natalie Solis live at the Dallas Police Department with the story. Natalie. Well, Heather Reiser has been with the department for 13 years and police say... 13 years. Dad's arrested at a drug house. He's got domestic violence and he's implicated in two capital murders. 13 years. He's been protecting and serving the community. Who thinks that all those 13 years he was a great fine officer and suddenly he just decided to beat his wife and kill two people at the end of his career and the Dallas Police Department was Johnny on the spot and caught him. Raise your hand. These latest charges are not related to his work as an officer. Now he has been under investigation since August of 2019, remaining on the job until his arrest this morning. This criminal investigation dates back to 2017 with the death of related murder victims. A month into his new job, Dallas Police Chief Eddie Garcia announcing capital murder charges against one of their own. 36-year-old officer Brian Reiser, seen here in a mugshot from a previous family violence arrest, now charged with ordering the murders of two people, a man and... Oh, I was wondering why the two pictures were so different. So when he assaulted his wife, this is what he looked like. The other picture where he's got gray whiskers is his new arrest. Sorry woman who police only characterize as acquaintances of Riser. Riser was on the has been on the department since August 2008 and was assigned to the South Central Patrol Division. The body of 31 year old Lisa Sines found with multiple gunshot wounds in the 200 block of Santa Fe Trail near the Trinity River in March of 2017. Police say she was kidnapped and then shot and killed at the location. Police arrested these three men and charged them with capital murder, their charges still pending. According to court documents, one of the three is the witness who outed Riser's involvement to police in August 2019. Police say that witness told them Riser first contacted him about a plot to rob drug houses based on information provided by Riser. Oh, so they had prior to where that's how they were committing the burglaries. He was pointing out drug houses and instead of arresting them, he was having these three dudes go rob them of money and drugs that they could sell and all get money. Wow, this guy's an entrepreneur. No wonder he made it in Dallas Police Department. He's pretty smart. But the witness told police Riser changed plans and instead asked the witness to kill a man by the name of Albert Douglas for $3,500. Mr. Douglas was reported missing by his family in February of 2017. According to witnesses, he was also kidnapped and murdered in the 200 block of Santa Fe Avenue. Unfortunately, his body was never recovered. Police say Signs was the second hit allegedly ordered two weeks later by Riser for $6,000. But Riser never paid because the three men were arrested. Oh, this, man, this guy's pretty smart. So you only get paid if you don't get arrested. If you get arrested, I ain't paying you because you got arrested. Damn. So this guy sets up drug houses instead of busting them, sends his friends to get them. Then he tells his cops buddies, you, man, I know where you can catch these guys because if you arrest them, then I ain't got to pay them. Man, this guy should like be the next police chief. Court documents say FBI analysis placed Riser's cell phone and squad car at locations where the witness says they met to plan the kidnappings and murders. The motive for these murders are unknown at this time. This remains an ongoing investigation. And Chief Riser says they will be looking at all the activity that Riser conducted. Chief Riser? Did she just call the chief? The, what the? Hang on. And Chief Riser says they will be looking at all the activity that Riser conducted as a police. <laughs> I just said they should make this guy chief and a reporter calls the new guy Chief Riser. Man, me and this woman are connected. We should like be bonding. Officer, as well as all of his arrests. And as we mentioned, Riser was also arrested in 2017 on that misdemeanor family violence charge. Police today tell us they don't have an update on that case, but they do clarify that that charge is unrelated to today's. I don't care if it's unrelated or not. It's still domestic violence. It's violence that a guy that carries a gun on duty and you're not relieving him of duty. And there's federal law that says if you're 
involved in domestic violence, you can't carry a gun, at least for the pesky citizens. Maybe Texas has exempted cops from that. In California, cops are not exempt from that. Maybe Texas has exempted them. I don't know. Anyway, interesting case. Uh, I'm sure you know that we've we've had all kind of bad information, and everyone will be cleared. These guys will all get back to their studying, and uh, we'll end that there.